Next curve. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Rethink Podcast. Probably shouldn't be laughing, but、uh, have a very special guest, and I'm very excited. So I'm Leonard Lee, managing director of Next Curve, and today I have a very, 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 very special guest, Debbie Reynolds of Debbie Reynolds Consulting, joining me today to talk about metaverse. The metaverse, yes, <laughs> yes, but more importantly, privacy as it relates to the metaverse, past, present, and future. Okay. And I just want to thank Debbie so much for joining me again here on a Rethink podcast. So, Debbie, please take a moment to introduce yourself to our audience and、uh, let them know more about your background if they're not familiar with you. But you're famous, so everyone should know you and what you do. And、uh, you know, talk about some of the work that you're doing. Wonderful, very important work that you're doing. Oh, thank you so much! Oh, that's so sweet.、Uh, I was excited to be able to talk with you again. We had so many fun conversations. So, like, we <laughs> dig deep and talk about all types of crazy, wacky things.、Um, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm I'm Debbie Reynolds. They call me the Data Diva. I'm the founder, CEO, and Chief Data Privacy Officer, Debbie Reynolds Consulting. I like to tell people I work at the intersection of law and privacy,、um, mm. technology. So, basically. When I'm working, I'm typically working on emerging technologies, emerging、mm-hmm. issues. A lot of times, I'm working、yeah. on things for which there are no regulations yet, because、uh, we're、yep. collecting data and information that no one's really thought about in terms、right. of laws and stuff like that. So、mm-hmm. I like to, you know, so I advise companies all over the world. A lot of times, because let's say. Someone says, "I want to sell my product in Sweden," so I、yeah. tell them how to do that, or they want to design a product to work with, you know, put put in a school for children. So how do you、uh-huh. do that? You know, so、yeah. uh, I have a lot of fun working with people, you know, developer groups, working with legal teams, compliance folks, operational people, implementation folks,、uh, just talking about all types of crazy technology things that people want to do. So. And, and then you know I do content stuff like like Leonard. I'm not、yeah. quite a pro as he is. Oh but,、um. please, <laughs> please! You're you're not just a data diva. You're also a media diva. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, come on, come on! <laughs> yeah, you were, come on now. <laughs> you were one of my first guests on my podcast. Yeah, so I was. Yes, I had it for about a year now. So I think you were like episode three. I want to say. Yeah,、and、I think we're on fifty three now.、So. Wow! Congratulations. Yeah. 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 So it's been very well received. Yes.、So、yeah. Awesome. Okay. Happy well, to be here. <laughs> we're glad to have you, and let's get into this. So. For our audience,、uh, Debbie and I are going to be、uh, covering the following topics. So, number one,、um, what is the metaverse, and what is this thing called the metaverse economy? So, we want to level set on that a bit before we jump into the、uh, topic du jour, which is、uh, privacy. So, number two, what does privacy risk look like in the metaverse? And I'm really excited to hear from you. You know, this isn't scripted. I have no idea what you're going to say, but I'm super excited to hear. What your perspective is on this topic and this particular bullet item, and then what we'll do is we'll talk about what are some of the privacy regulations that need to be considered. And this is exactly the kind of stuff that you're doing. Again, very excited to hear your perspective there. And then finally, I think what we want to do for the consumer audience, even though we don't really have a huge consumer audience, it's mostly enterprise. But maybe for some of the The thoughtful enterprises that are looking in hosting metaverses,、um, you know, how do you protect your、uh, consum- the consumer,、um, uh, you know, privacy, their privacy, and、um, and maintain that for them. And as a consumer, what do you do to protect yourself? What are some of those basic things? So, does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, so let's start off with item number one, which is. Uh, what is this metaverse thing that everyone's getting excited about? You know, and、um, you know, I, I want to do this. I, I'm going to jump into Wikipedia really quick here, okay? And, and it's funny because I actually had to look metaverse up. Not that I didn't know what it was. I just wanted to know what the definition 
is. And so, of course, you know, you go to Wikipedia and the funny thing is the definition has changed. They've updated it. So anyways, this is what, how it reads now. The metaverse is a hypothesized iteration of the Internet. Um, I don't know what that means. Uh, supporting persistent online 3D virtual environments through conventional personal computing as well as virtual and augmented reality headsets. That's a very weird definition, different from what I saw before. Now, here's another, um, I don't know if it's a commentary, it is commentary. The metaverse has come to be criticized as a method of public relations, building on, um, you know, uh, you know, purely speculative overhype um, based on existing technologies. That's interesting, and you know, so they've added about four or five definitions, but I think in you'll you'll agree that it, it fundamentally are, uh, is this whole idea of um, virtual worlds there's a, a whole corpus of technologies that are enabling this and um hopefully you'll agree this has uh, the meta the concept of the metaverse and actual implementations have been around for a long time like the first one i think was this whole second life application back in 2003 and then of course sony did their little thing with i think it was a playstation 3 which was um, PlayStation Home. So it's not a new thing. There have been companies that uh, continue to put out metaverse platforms um, and then also companies that you know tried to do it and didn't quite make it, right? So your thoughts. Yeah. Do you agree with these definitions or do you want to color commentate on some of them or maybe refute? Uh you know what? I'm going to throw all those out. I'm going to make up my own definition <laughs> of what I think okay. the metaverse is. So yeah, yeah. the metaverse is like the internet around you. So oh. the metaverse really isn't. So let's say metaverse right now, metaverse with a lowercase m, right? Mm -hmm. So right now you have to go somewhere to go to the metaverse. So you have to go to your computer. You have to go to your phone. You have to go to your laptop. Right. The the real metaverse will be you walking down the street and being able to interact with things digitally, or right? have things interact with you digitally and you be able to do things. So uh -huh. having um, a perspective that you're walking through life and think you things are being recorded about you, things are being tracked uh -huh. about you. You may uh -huh. be, you know. Um, not just games, right? But right. doing things uh, in a way that you don't have to go to a computer to do it. So let's say, for instance, right. let's yeah. say something crazy. So let's say, let's say you're walking down the street and you have some Ray-Ban glasses, uh -huh. okay? And let's say you look at the drugstore and they'll say, hey, your prescription uh, is, you know, uh, about to expire you want to refill your prescription and you do something you say yeah and it'll send a message to the pharmacy and you just go in or whatever right. so this so the metaverse really is supposed to be a way in some ways to enable people to connect and do things in any environment uh you know not having to interact with the right. computer not having to interact with things but right. all that is about kind of your like location and yeah. all these systems knowing who you are and what you like and what you right. love, or what you want to see. Yeah, that's, you know, that's really interesting. So that is one version of the metaverse that I, I hear NVIDIA, because, you know, there's two companies out there right now talking about metaverse quite a bit. Number one, it's Facebook. Number two, it's NVIDIA. And what you're describing is in a way... Uh, probably about 60% of what like Jensen Huang is talking about when he said he talks about metaverse, right? Then there's the other piece, which is, um, or the other 40%, which is, uh, well, there there's then the version that uh, Facebook is talking about, which is centered around virtual worlds, right? Like the Oculus uh, VR glasses and stuff. And then being able to compose um, these, well, virtual worlds, you know, and, and so, yeah, I, I definitely, I think um, maybe that's what we do in this conversation is talk about both because I think both are relevant, right? 
because yeah. um, there is the gaming, the more gamey, and I don't mean taste, uh, mm-hmm. the gamey as- gaming-ish aspect of metaverse or a version of metaverse. And then there's the one that you're talking about, which I think is extremely important because there's a cyber physical thing going on there, right? There's yeah. the, our real world, and then there's this digital layer um, or digital model uh, that it is uh, then, you know, kind of enhancing or augmenting our our our, our real lives, right? Mm-hmm. Versus something in a, a simulation or a gaming environment. Right. So I like to say it's like the metaverse, if it's done well, it will be like a fourth dimension. So you walk down the street, you're in a three-dimensional world. So this would be yeah. like an extra layer on top of that, that huh. you can interact with and it interacts with you in some ways. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I like to say, you know, we saw recently Facebook rename themselves Met- Meta. Mm-hmm. And I say Zuckerberg is wrong for the right reasons. Okay, so uh. he's wrong because Facebook and companies like Facebook won't be the center of the met- metaverse, right? But He's right because the metaverse is going to be a big thing. <laughs> so the metaverse really is going to be um, about devices that collect information. Mm-hmm. And also collecting the information is one half part of the battle, but then being able to fuse that information together and be able to gain insights from the fusion of that information. That's right. what the metaverse will end up being. Yeah. So yeah. The next trillion dollar company will be someone you've never heard of. And they'll probably be a company that can do this fusion that I'm talking about uh, related to being able to capture this data in real or near real time right. from different places, from different you know information right. sources. And maybe Facebook could be one of those sources. I, I don't know. Uh, but being able to do that and be able to get insights in some way, maybe take action, right? Take action in some way. Uh, you know, against people, for people, you know, obviously right, right. the marketing people love the metaverse. They're like, oh, we get yeah. to sell more stuff. You know, you see, let's yeah. say, yeah. you know, let's say right now. So, right. I went this year because of COVID. I ended up at a couple of virtual conferences where uh-huh. you, you were avatar, you got, you know, picked out your clothes and you were interacting with people. And it was actually kind of fun. But, uh-huh. you know, the fashion where they're like, oh, OK, they can't wait to do stuff like this because they're like, OK, that your gown that you saw on the runway, you can have it in the virtual world for $30, right? Yeah. So you couldn't, maybe you couldn't afford a $5,000 gown. Maybe you can wear it in the metaverse for $30. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, there are going to be a lot of different ways that they're going to do this, but really it is about you interacting in some virtual right. world. But in order for that to, to, to occur, all these sensors need to know who you are. And they yeah. need to know where you are. <laughs> so right, a lot of it right. is about your location and who you yeah. are, basically. Yeah, that's you know what that's really really interesting. Um, and so you know, the kind of, the way that I look at your what you're referring to in, in this let's call it a version of um, a metaverse or an archetype is is the one where the Internet of Things, right? Instrumentation of the real world is then uh, provides a two-way interface with sort of this digital layer that you're talking about and then you know like you said a lot of stuff can happen um when you bring these two world these two worlds together right a digital overlay over the physical and you know you know we see this a lot actually in retail right because think about what amazon's doing you know they were online they're well they're still an online um retailer but one of the big things that's missing from their uh let's call it omni-channel uh equation is the offline experience right and so that's why now uh they've ventured into devices and they have the smart speakers and all the stuff that they place in your home and they're and then what they have all these new devices that uh provide security features right that little uh robot that floats around and and can check your home which is yeah uh, yeah. i mean it's an interesting cyber physical interface because obviously they're capturing data depending on what their uh or content about you and actually your personal surroundings Uh, and and, 
of course, is curious what the privacy um, terms are of that. Oh <laughs> but oh you know, you know what I'm saying. I mean, that that's yeah. actually kind of uh, an element, I think, or at least a, a permutation or an application of metaverse. Yeah. Or at least the type that you're talking about. Yeah. So if you have a smart thermostat yeah. or a smart yeah. speaker or a vacuum cleaner, like a room of vacuum cleaner or an air tag, your yeah. your toe is in the metaverse already because yeah. those those devices are will talk to each other mm-hmm. at some point. So your thermostat will talk to your refrigerator at some point. And this is not sci-fi. <laughs> Yeah, you know, no, yeah, absolutely not. You know, so just man, just to give you an example. So when you're talking about like, um, was, who does the Ring doorbell? Amazon is that their yeah, uh, Ring? They do the okay. the Ring doorbell. So they were yeah, they, they that company. They had come out with this thing, this sidewalk thing. I don't know if they're still going to do it, where they were going to try to connect people's yeah. like a network of people's cameras and yeah. that's a yeah. metaverse thing, right? But they can't do that unless you have a device. So this is right. all about devices, sensors, yeah. proximity to one another, where you are, where yeah. they are. So it's yeah. like all about sensors. So right. all these, you know, uh, Facebook is very popular, obviously. A lot of people know who right. it is. Them kind of throwing a meta thing out um, has been a big thing. But all these other companies are also playing in the metaverse or they know it's a big yeah. bet on it, you know. Yeah. So that AirTag, it's no coincidence that came out by Apple. It's not yeah. about your keys. It's about you and where you are yeah. and you know yeah. where exactly you are. So right, if you think right. about like the, some of the stuff they were trying to do with the COVID proximity, you know, that isn't very accurate, you know, using yeah. Bluetooth for that. But if you had a AirTag, you, you could get an accurate <laughs> your phone yeah. and air tag together which tr- would be able to tell your near exact location mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. a lot of it is about your location and who you are so i, I want to i want you to react to to this thought um so let's flip on over to the other metaverse the, mm-hmm. the gamey one right the one that's you know fully virtual it's not really trying to interface with the physical world but one of the things that I've noticed happening with these massive um, multiplayer games that are now kind of evolving into more Im- uh, immersive, uh, you know, adopting more, Im- more immersive formats, right? Uh, you or at least interfaces using um, VR glasses. One of the things that I've noticed is there are some companies that are doing this um, thing called uh, psyche mapping. Have you ever heard of that? No. They, they, what they, so what they do is they, they track your interactions in a virtual world and they have all these different frameworks for kind of engaging you and then measuring or determining your, uh, or, you know, uh, or yeah, capturing your choices, you know, and then basically using AI to kind of reverse engineer your psyche through your interactions in these virtual worlds, right? Uh, and um, so there, there are actual companies that are doing that, gaming companies that are doing that right now. And um, that framework or that model um, is very easily, if not already, um, being evolved into some of these more progressive uh, gaming uh, platforms, if you want to call them metaverses or whatever immersive mm-hmm. gaming platforms right mm-hmm. uh so i mean what, what what are your thoughts there based oh on goodness. what you're hearing and and by the way this is this is not this is not hypothetical there are mm-hmm. companies mm-hmm. that are doing this yeah Whew. well i would say yeah um because there are new data types that are being collected now it's hard because regulation unfortunately a lot of regulation doesn't come to pass until there's some harm that happens, right. right? So until there's a harm that happens that someone can make it into a tangible regulation, you know, it's kind of very much a wild, wild west. But the problem is that the harm can be so detrimental to people that, it, you know, there may be no adequate legal redress. So, you know, I work a lot with companies. I'm concerned about this a lot. So I work with um, organizations on standards for um, uh, VR, uh, virtual reality, mixed reality, augmented reality, and privacy 
in those areas related related to not only compliance, but you know, just because right. there isn't a law doesn't mean you should still do it, <laughs> right? So right, right. Being right. able to collect information about people, and then the the problem comes first of all, the collection is a problem, right. and then what you do with the data. You know, so what what are you going to do with that? Are you going to sell it to an insurance right. company or is it someone that going to be denied a job because of this? You know, so right. there's so much data being collected and we have no idea like how it's being used or leveraged right. uh, against us. So, right, right. So let's move on to our next topic then, which is the, the risk aspect. Right. So as you look at metaverse, these two varieties of metaverses, and you know, I know I kind of dropped the bomb on you with that last, <laughs> that last scenario there or, um, situation. I don't know what you call it. Uh, use case, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, what are some of those privacy concerns that you see uh, associated with metaverse? Well, the privacy concerns that I see with Metaverse I'm concerned about is that they're collecting stuff that was never collected before. So let's say you're wearing a headset and the headset is picking up the ambient sound in your house. Right? You tell a lot about someone's house by listening, you know. Do they live near a hospital? You know, who who else is in the house or whatever? So you don't know what exactly is being collected about you and because there are not no this is wild west stuff right so there are no regulations about the ambient sound in your house or what it can tell about you and then then we have uh the issue of inference right where they're trying to infer things so so who owns that who owns the inference so let's say you know you have a conversation with another guy and someone says, well, we think this is Leonard's brother, but you never told them that. Right. But they are making an assumption. Okay. He has a, Leonard has a brother. He was talking to him on the phone, like, you know, two, twice a week or something like that. It's like that inference, whether it's true or not, is something that you would never have access to. So you really don't own it. Right. Cause you never, you never gave it to the person. So, when we're talking about data privacy and regulations, a lot of it's like, okay, be transparent with the data the individuals give you and what you do with it. But if, if you've never given that person that data and they created an inference that you don't own it, but you don't know what they're going to do with it either. So, right. Yeah, and I think there's some parallels with the concern I brought up with uh, uh, psyche mapping, you know, which was something that really shocked me. But in essence, in this other archetype of metaverse that you're talking about, I mean, that, something very similar is happening. I mean, if right, I mean, it, it, the, the thing is, is that rather than taking interactions and observations from a virtual world, they're taking it f- through uh, cyber physical interfaces and then doing inferences on top of that, right? And so that, uh, yeah, that's weird. Yeah, it's w- <laughs> wild west is a wild west yeah so it's totally crazy it's totally crazy i'm i'm very concerned about inference and i talk about it a lot on my podcast because inferences can be wrong right (laughs) and then who's to say they're not going to make a bad decision uh, because of that so i'll give an example so i i knew a lady that said that her sister had requested her information from google and they had you know these um companies not just google just threw them out there because that's the one she talked about but when, you know based on your online activity the things that you look at the things that you read or whatever they'll try to put you in a box put you in a category and so the cat you know her sister likes gardening and you know watching you know british tv shows and so they thought she was a 70 year old man and you know it's sort of funny because you think oh my goodness you know she's like a 30 year old woman and they think she's a 70 year old man but what if that what if that inference is transferred over to a employment situation? So yeah. let's say we're not going to show this person a job because they're 70 years old, you know, so uh-huh. they're retired. So I'm not going to show this person that job. So <laughs> this can get really tricky. And then the metaverse brings in a whole other layer of complication because now 
you have tons of data that was never collected before. Like no one ever cared that you walked down the street and got a cup of coffee. But somebody somewhere wants to know that, <laughs> you know? So the right. fact that it's being collected now, they're like, okay, well, hmm. Leonard likes coffee. He goes, you know, five times a week, he walks down the street, you know, and that and maybe for an advertiser who wants to sell you coffee, that may be great. But let's say, so let's say a crime happened on the routes that you typically take to the coffee shop. And they're like, oh, Leonard's a suspect now because he walks past his coffee shop every day, you know. Right. So that those are the types of things I can concerned about, you know, because the right. data can be wrong. The insight can be right. wrong. You can make an assumption that's completely right. wrong. Yeah, that's really, um, I don't think interesting is the right word. I think disturbing is the better word for this. Uh, so let's move on to our next topic, which is, or I, I, it's actually a question for you is, um, what are the privacy regulations that need to be considered? And uh, you know, one of the impressions that I'm getting from you, and I kind of got it from our previous conversations, is that there's really nothing you can do and unless there is a case that you can make that harm is being done, right? And so literally, the way that companies are going forward with data collections and profiling you and doing psyche mapping and all that the reason why they do all these things that actually quite honestly sound like uber big brother right except maybe it's not a government harvesting the money i mean the 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 information uh, it's a corporation doing it i don't know what's what's actually better quite honestly you know uh, that they're doing this because they can, and they'll they'll keep pushing the envelope unless there's some proactive regulation, right? To yeah. kind of preempt preempt certain types of behavior before you have to go through a whole legal process of proving harm. Is, right. is that kind of what I'm hearing from you? That is exactly. You're a good listener. Yes, that's exactly what you're hearing from me. So very, there are very few. So a lot of laws, you know, there are a couple on the books in yeah. different places that try to think about harm proactively. So uh -huh. I like uh, the fact that, for example, the GDPR has incorporated the international standard of privacy by design in the right. regulation. So yeah. that's like a proactive thing. So you know, people have data, harms can happen to people, they you misuse your data. So design things in a way that you don't abuse people's data. So that's like a good one. Um, one of the law, one of the regulations, and this is, uh, I guess I'm biased in some way because I'm from Illinois. So uh, Illinois has like the strongest, has the most stringent biometric privacy law in the world right now. And um, recently, just give you an example. So some things that have happened as a result of this biometric law. So it, it's kind of people's the worst nightmare in terms of privacy laws. This is what they don't want to see in, in the U S and this was kind of snuck by people because it, it, uh, it was enacted in 20, uh, 2008. So it was, it was way before, you know, GDPR and all this other type of stuff. But basically, this is right. This law has a private right of action. It is about biometric data collection per incident instance. So let's say you use your thumbprint to, to go to the gym or something like that to check in. So every time that they take your thumbprint, if they do it in a way that's not compliant with this law, they could be subject to a fine of up to, I think, it's like between a thousand and five thousand dollars each time that they capture your your biometric information, um, and then the harm, and this is the part that you were talking about, is that you don't have to show a material harm, so you don't have to show, oh, I had an accident because of this or whatever. Like their their interpretation of harm is the fact that you took this data and you used it in some way that the person didn't agree to or didn't understand. So um, Facebook was involved in the case for many years um, and it actually settled last year. It, it settled because it became a class action. And so this case, they calculated that if Facebook had lost, well, first of all, they settled the case for $650 million, okay? And if they had lost that case, if they went to court and they lost, they would have they calculated that they would have lost like 35 
a billion dollars. Wow. Basically. So, so no one, you know, you don't want it, <laughs> you know, you don't want that. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I think, you know, and recently we saw Facebook uh, decide they were not going to do this facial capture uh, uh, on their platform anymore. So they're going to de- delete the face prints that they have. Right, I think right. part of that is because of that law. It's like, okay, right. Illinois yeah. is just one state. So if right. let's say if other states decide, oh, we like this, we want six hundred fifty million dollars from Facebook too. So we're going to pass this law. So you don't want fifty states passing laws like this, you know, if you're a corporation. So I think you know we need more laws that are thinking about things proactively because the harm can be catastrophic, you know. So there will right. be no legal redress, and then it, it can be too late. By the mm-hmm. time that regulations actually uh, come about, uh, and like you said, it's going to be a reaction to some series of harm or a trend of harm that's observed in the in, in the public. Uh, you know, if if we don't have that proactivity, um, then yeah, the, then it could be too late. And I think that's some of the challenges that we're facing with privacy issues with uh, you know the various. You know, company. I hate. I'm not going to use the term big tech because that's that's inaccurate. But uh, companies that basically uh, uh, base their business on freemium ad-driven models is really what it boils down to. Um, yeah. So yeah, it, it, it's pretty um, crazy. And you know, one of the things that I think I'm just going to put this out there. It almost sounds. It seems like that opt-in requirement should be uh, instituted as a standard um, regulatory requirement for any company that puts, uh, uh, you know, online services out there or for anything that harvests personal data in any form, whether it's proxy or it's an explicit, you know, capture of personal data. Uh, it, it just seems like that is the easy solution, right? Even if you're going to do premium, a freemium model uh, for your business, uh, and you have ad- you're going to go through uh, uh, you know monetizing services through adver- you know advertisers, then that that would be uh, an easy fix. But I think the my biggest concern is as we look at the metaverse that the regulators just have no idea what it really is. You know what I'm saying? No, um, I think no. that's the biggest problem because the industry doesn't quite really know what it is because no. a lot of it is the old stuff. There's exactly. a couple of convergence that are happening, but the solution is going to be addressing some of the old things and some of the problems that actually have already gotten quite big. Right. Um, so maybe right. that, that, that's exactly. that lens that we need to apply or that perspective we need to apply to the 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 emerging problem or even the present problem of metaverse privacy right Does that sound right. good uh <laughs> does that sound intelligent to you <laughs> yes yes yeah absolutely so yeah so the the issue we have now is that we have old laws that were created mm-hmm. before people were using computing the way that we're using computing now so yeah it doesn't really apply as well. So I, I, you know, some people say, you know, logs should be technology agnostic. I don't really agree with that, you know, because you, you, you can't, how can you articulate a harm if you don't know what things are doing? <laughs> so, right. so if people 50 years ago didn't know anything about geolocation tracking. How could they write laws about that? You know what I mean? Right. So I think that you have to know what the potential, even if you don't understand the technology, understanding the potential harm that can happen if someone's biometrics are misused. So let's say, right. let's right. forget about what technology is. We're like, Hey, we think biometric information is important and we don't want it misused. So that's kind of the genesis of that law, um, yeah. the BIPA law in Illinois, which I like because, mm-hmm. you know, they this particular law was not about a particular harm. Like it wasn't like something happened yeah. and let's do this. They're like, this is I don't think it would be great if people manipulated someone's biometric information. So we need more right. regulations like that. But then also, you know, we're stumbling over things right now. So, you know, yeah. people are still clicking on links from, you know, 
you know, their long lost uncle who's going to give them some inheritance or something. So yeah. people are still falling for those. Who already passed or, away. <laughs> yeah. Or, or, you know, still have the password <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, or password yeah. one, two, three, or whatever. So yeah. it's like we have all these emerging issues that are happening, but then we're yeah. kind of stumbling over the basics. Right. So that's definitely a right. concern. Okay. So our final. Uh, topic here or question for you is how do we protect ourselves in a metaverse wow so out in order to protect yourself in the metaverse for me it's all about uh education so uh i have some some of my friends they get uh not not really a lot of them but some of them they're like oh you should you know I'm against this or I'm against that or whatever. And I'm yeah. like, I'm more like, okay, let me tell you what it does. Let me tell you what could happen. Yeah. And then you have to choose, right? You have to put your big boy pants on and cowboy up and figure out what you want to do. So once you know what the risks are, you have to decide, you know, do I want this? So do I take the cotton candy now and my teeth fall out in six months? Like, do you want that or whatever? So you have to like make that decision. <laughs> so uh, so for me, it's really about education and making sure people are understanding. So you don't want them to say yes today and then be regretful tomorrow for something that they can't change. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, I think education is definitely one. I have a couple little bullet items that I put out there as well. Uh, but yeah, a lot of these are tough, uh, tough, right? I mean, one of the things I have is read the fine print, but whoever does that, right? Uh, definitely educate yourself on the platform. But, you know, I, I, I think, um, it really has to boil down to some fundamental basic regulations, uh, like I mentioned before this, uh, you know, one of the things that maybe you check is a simple thing is it is there an opt is it by default opt uh you know in right meaning you're not opted in you the that the platform must seek your permission whether or not there's regulations that require it or not i think that's like you know we talk about privacy first all the time right mm -hmm. that might be f the first principle of privacy yeah. first does that platform ask for your permission to use your data in any way whether it's explicit or implicit or inferred or what have you if it doesn't understand that you're you're at risk i yeah. think that's really what it boils down to i mean if well to that's basically what everything down to a simple terms that's right. basically what this what Apple did with app transparency. So basically, right. they said, okay, uh, and and just to, to put a fine point on this thing I'm about to say, oh, people who make OS who run operating systems, they have extraordinary power. Okay, so right. again, go back to my metaverse example with Facebook. Okay. If you don't have an OS, or you don't have hardware, like you're not going to be a leader in the metaverse, period. Okay. Yeah. So, what Apple did with app transparency, they made that sort of that marketing stuff opt in. So, basically, they opted everyone out, right? And then people have to opt in. Yeah. And only five, like 5% 5 of people opted in. And we're seeing all these reports about people like, oh, I lost this money because, you know, before it was like a free for all and it's no more that way. So right. I think right. you have to work a lot harder, you know, for those people, you could possibly get some of those people back, but you have to make it work their while. So before it was like, let me take as much data as I can for you for no, no true benefit for you. Right. Yeah. But now the person, I think you have to be able to tell them or let them know, like, what is the benefit for me? Yeah. So I tell yeah. people, you know, think about what you're sharing. Think, share with a purpose. You know, don't don't give away your fingerprints for a ten dollar coupon to go to the grocery store. You know, yeah. just don't do that. It's not worth it. It's not worth. That's not a, a fair trade, basically. Right, so, and that's I, another I, important. That's one thing that I love that you bring up all the time is it's not a fair trade, right? And you don't. Yeah. Most people don't even know that they're making that bargain. 
Right. Yeah, it's very the relationship is is naturally asymmetrical anyway, yeah. right? So the, the company wants more from you than what you can get from the company. And to some extent, that's kind of capitalism anyway, but it's so it's is way asymmetrical. It's like, right. oh my God, like why would someone even agree to that? You know? So <laughs> like uh, you yeah, know, I saw no. some companies they're, they're trying to tip people like employees. So they're like, oh, yeah. you don't have to carry around a key card anymore. Let's put this chip in your under your skin. And you, when you come to work, you just, you know, go in, I'm like, no, no, that's too much. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it, 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 if the cow knew that it was going to become hamburger, it would probably not eat so much grass. That's right. That's right. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yes, yes. <laughs> I just came up with that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Then the cow doesn't really want to starve either. But I, you, you know what I'm saying? You, the cow would yes. fatten itself up to, uh, anyways. Right. Maybe bad analogy, but you get my point. <laughs> yes, yes. Right. I think it's you know these things are inevitable. Like they're not going to stop ever. Yeah. So if yeah. it can be done and be created, they're going to do that. And so yeah. what I'm seeing now, so technology always outpaces this law. And regulation just because right. law is really about what happened in the past it's about precedent yeah. and stuff like that so right. um they always outpace it but now what we're going to see is kind of exponential outpacing like right. we're going to go instead of being five years behind or 10 years behind you know they're going to be right. light years behind what's right. coming next so i think and then too when we were talking about like the metaverse and goggles and gaming you know, the thing that they're going to do now with the metaverse is going to be successful that people aren't understanding is that, you know, the metaverse isn't really going to be about gaming. It's going to be about your health. So like when you go, let's say during COVID, we were doing all these virtual doctor's appointments. So maybe they'll see some goggles in the mail that you have to put on when you're in the, the meeting with them while you're at your house and they can diagnose you by the way your head moves or the way your eyes move or something like that. Or, you know, thinking, let's say you got a job and normally you go to a HR training for something. Instead of you looking at a video, you may role play in that, in that situation. So these right. are technologies yeah, yeah, yeah. that are actively being created right now. So I think a lot of people, when they think about metaverse and the goggles, they think about gaming. And they're like way ahead. They're way beyond gaming. So this is going to be like a real world thing that you're going to have to deal with. And then to me, the thing yeah. I'm really concerned about with the metaverse is the digital divide. So if you aren't plugged in to like, if you don't have a smartphone, like the metaverse will be collecting information about you, but you will have no agency over that information. Yeah. You know, that's really interesting. You're, you're bringing up a very fascinating point that um you know in the the in the in the um the more iot-ish metaverse that you're talking about you have certain types of privacy concerns uh but and then you have these other varieties uh, in the gaming space where things tend to be more social right massively social and i think that's I think that's that's a nuance, nuance difference. Maybe not even nuance difference, a, a b big difference. And so, you know, initially when we came in and started having the discussion about metaverse, I didn't think that you were going to come at me with that direction as much because I kind of look at that as the IoT. But yeah, I think this um, sort of you know, dual identity of the metaverse is a really cool outcome of this discussion because I think you're absolutely right. There is a digital overlay. It's going to be uh, that digital overlay is going to be a metaverse. But then on this other side, the virtual side, or if you want to call it the VR side versus the AR side, this side it has its own unique privacy um, issues and I think one of the ways as we look at security and we think of threat vectors there we maybe need to start thinking in terms of privacy threat vectors as well and so as the technology continues to evolve and uh, advance uh, that we need to look at this in kind of a way or we should whether or not we will is the big question right but we should be looking at this in a very similar way that we look at cybersecurity and how we try to be 
proactive there. But then, I mean, think about how difficult a time we have there being proactive, right? Mm -hmm. We're very defensive in cybersecurity. Um, oh, yeah. You know, and then with privacy, we're not really doing much. No, no, not nearly as much as we need to do, um, right. especially right now. Yeah. You know, in the U.S., you know, privacy is, is not a fundamental human right. So a lot of our privacy laws are about consumers consuming. So if you can't consume, you know, you don't really have anything that you can exercise. <laughs> So if you're not trading your information for some other value, you know, you don't, you, you're not even playing in this game, basically. Right. Wow. Mind is totally blown. This is, as <laughs> usual, a wonderful conversation, Debbie. So um, that's all the time we have. Not that we really have a time limit, but um, this has just been an incredibly fascinating discussion. So, Debbie, I want to give you an opportunity to tell our audience how they can get in touch with you and tap into the great insights that you have. Like I, I, I've told you before, I'm a big fan of yours because you fight the good fight, right? No, seriously, you know this. You know that I think very highly of you because of what you do. Um, tell our audience how to get in touch with you and find out more about privacy. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. So people can contact me on my website, uh, DebbieReynoldsConsulting.com. I have a lot of videos and resources that people can look at. I also have a podcast called, called the Data Diva Talks Privacy Podcast. It's on all the major um, podcast networks. It was rated, I think, the number... It's the number two in the world right now. Data wow. Privacy Podcast. Congratulations. So, yeah. It's me and then it's a billion-dollar company in front of me today but we're, we're going to change that soon. yeah there you go yeah. <laughs> that's wonderful okay awesome so to our listeners thanks for joining us uh please subscribe to the um next curve uh youtube site as well as apple podcast and visit us at www.next-curve.com we revamped the whole site in our research portal um, there's great stuff there for you to take a look at that should be insightful for you and in helping you understand our digital future. And, you know, of course, Debbie is going to be featured there as well as this, uh, this uh, episode of the Rethink podcast. Uh, Debbie, once again, thank you so much and um, be safe, be healthy. And we're going to do this again. Yeah, totally. I love talking with you. So this would be great. All right. Bye. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Visit us at www.next-curve.com.